with that, we come to the end of the presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, call out that whatever we covered during this session and even more, all that information is available in Securing Cisco IP Telephony Networks. This is a book. It's a guide. It's a, it's a companion to Cisco UC security. And it addresses the prominent void where the UC and the security technologies converge because there is a huge gap between understanding of security personnel to what UC is all about, how it's done, and UC personnel to, hey, why I'm dealing with security at all. So to bridge that gap, this book would help you a lot. So that this book also covers UK, UC PKI fundamentals and concepts in, in great detail. It covers threat, risk assessment, security strategy development and security framework as well in great detail, and an end-to-end -end security approach right from a network security point of view to a security policy point of view to application security to endpoint security to device level security. Everything is covered from CUCM to Unity Connection to CUPS to gateways to cube to gatekeepers to switches to routers. So every aspect of a possible Enterprise UC network has been covered in, in this title. So this would be a companion and a single shop stop for any UC security related query pertinent to your enterprise. These are the further reading and references. Um, so securing Cisco IP telephony networks, CUCM security guide. There are certain CSE articles as well you can refer to which have uh, uh, detailed information and great information pertinent to certificates and UC security. Okay, so the third polling question is, how do we manage the UC PKI? And there are four options. The poll is open on the right-hand side. I'll read the options quickly. I have a central trusted CA, external CA, via which I get all certificates signed and keep an eye on the certificate expiry. Option B, I leverage the CUCM certificate expiry notification, OCSP, and follow other Cisco recommended leading practices. Option C, there is currently no specific setup process for managing certificates in my Cisco collaboration network. I'm looking for more insights to know how I can set up a process. And the last option, option D, I'm content with uh, self-signed certificates and do not want to get into intricate of UCPKI. And uh, thanks, Akhil, for a great presentation. And also, thank you, everyone, for participating in our event polling. Now it's time to answer some of the questions. Uh, we have very uh, less time, so I'll take uh, one or two questions. Akhil, uh, the first question that is, what is the function of CAPF? Uh, certificate Authority Proxy Function, uh, that's a built-in service to CUCM. And this enables converting a call manager cluster into secure mode and vice versa. And it also enables enrolling firewalls to a call manager. Essentially, uh, at bare bones, a CAPF enables conversion of a, a non-secure default behavior cluster into a secure cluster and allows secure communication between endpoints. That is, it enables creation of certificate trust list which gets downloaded on endpoints, which is Cisco IP phones. And uh, whenever the IP phone, a secure IP phone will communicate with another secure IP phone, it, it can establish SRTP between the endpoints, and it will establish TLS with the call manager. So the essential function of CAPF is to enable encryption in a cluster. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, there is one more question that says, when is the phone SAST trust certificate used? So uh, the phone SAST trust certificate is used when uh, we are trying to deploy secure SRST because SRST leverages soft tokens. It does not use hard E tokens. At that point in time, we do have a trust point created by the name of SAST. So if we are trying to leverage secure SRST and SRST is part of a device pool as an SRST reference, a phone should be able to trust it, and at that point in time, this certificate would pitch in. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take a few quick questions. Uh, so the next question is, will CUCM, CUPS, or Jabber support NDES, that's Microsoft, does CUPS, CUCM, or other Cisco applications support SCEP? 
cap uh, no not not as of today and it's not on the road map as well because all we do support as of today is uh, the manual enrollment cap is something which is uh, more or less microsoft oriented it's not uh, really an open standard if i talk about it so there are no committed plans as of today to support skip enrollment for certificates in case of any uc application okay thank you uh, let me take one last question the question is how is the vpn phone certification affected when a cucm upgrade is performed so if a vpn phone is remote at that point in time if it is connected to a call manager and if an upgrade is performed ideally till the certificate does not expire the vpn certificate does not expire it does not impact the phone however if the certificate expires the phone has to be brought back within the enterprise premises so it can download the new certificate over a, a trust established connection and uh, essentially an upgrade does not impact a vpn phone working remotely or within the enterprise premises because an upgrade does not replace any certificates okay thanks akhil sure so that concludes the q and a portion of today's event and uh, you might have seen uh, in the promo the question that we were asking how is cisco ucm fighting crime and there are three options and here are some of the upcoming uh, webcast this is in japanese so if you if you speak japanese uh, the topic will be virtual port channel vpc it's on uh, tuesday january 14th and there is another uh, webcast on january 15th in portuguese the topic will be broadband network gateway concepts and configuration and there is another upcoming webcast in january 21st that's in russian the topic will be using packet tracer capture and other cisco ac tools for network troubleshooting by oleg and uh, a webcast in spanish the topic is zone based firewall introduction and performance review and here is upcoming webcast in english that is on february 4th tuesday the topic is cisco catalyst 6800 series switches and these are uh, some of the ask the expert events which are currently live in community if you go to expert corner or from the home page you can see this as the expert events the first one is uh, on topic cisco catalyst 6800 series switches by amar and the second one is unified computing system director by andrew and this is an upcoming as the expert event which will start on january 22nd or to, uh, sorry january 20th on and the topic is cloud web security on asa Okay so we invite you to actively collaborate in the Cisco social community and social media we have uh, communities in other languages as well like spanish portuguese japanese and russian so if you speak any of these languages we invite you to ask questions and collaborate in your local language and you can join the cisco support community it's free registration is free you just need to register yourself with the cisco id and then and uh, you can also rate the content so this will help uh, us identify and also the users to know which document is you know important in terms of the content and the quality and there is a cisco technical mobile app okay so time to answer the the trivia question uh, as we asked how is cisco ucm fighting crime oh i see okay so many of uh, Uh, then responded option A, but the right option is option C. North Wales Police adopted a unified video conference and unified messaging solution on smartphones, so that officers can spend less time traveling and more time in community. So that's the right option. Okay, great. So before signing off, please take a few minutes to complete your evaluation of today's session. This will help us address your business needs and interests in the future. And this concludes our session today. Thank you to our expert Akhil for sharing his expertise with us today. Also thanks to expert panelist Ashish for answering some of the technical questions. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.